Welcome everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in Denver, Colorado. It's theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Supercomputing 23, SC23. I'm John Furrier, kicking it off for our team coverage here at Savannah Peterson, who will be hosting with me this week, as well as Lisa Martin and Dave Nicholson. Our return from last year, Savannah, we were here last year, big set. We've got a bigger set this year, a little luxury box area over there for spectators to hang out, do deals, but we're here to get all the coverage. We're going to do whatever it takes. We'll start early like tonight, we'll go late. Whatever it takes to get the story and share that with you, that's our goal, of course. It'll be Feed the AI System, that's thecubeai.com, check it out. Savannah, great to see you, ready for a great next four days. After today, yes. there's four more days. I know, and, and I am so thrilled to be here, John. Honestly, it's an honor, thank you for having me here. Really excited for the week ahead with the team, and shout out to our wonderful production team who's going to make all that magic happen in that wonderful lounge you just mentioned for all of our guests. We're, we're very grateful. It, you called me, you outed me last year, though it's no surprise to anyone in my community, yeah. for being a hardware nerd. Yep. We are at the epicenter <laughs> of hardware nerdism, yeah. and I just couldn't be more thrilled for the week. I, you and I both have a lot of lists of things we're pumped about. What's top yeah. on the list for you? Well, you know, you, you are a nerd, which is great, but this show here is, I would call the nerd factor super high because it's now this show, Supercomputing, has been around since 1988. That was the year that I graduated college. It's still going on. That's the year and, I was born, John. And it was, <laughs> okay, go, uh, again, <laughs> she, she blinded me with science. Density, <laughs> cooling, you know. Um, this is a show that has been a chip show. It's about technology. I mean, it's hardcore nerd power. I mean, this show is, is great. Now the convergence of cloud computing has just changed the game. And this year, a little friend showed up called AI and everyone's like, say hello to my little friend, AI, changes hyperscale compu hyper computing, so HPC, but also changes the silicon game. So if you look at in today's market, Savannah, you want to go, you want to go complete explosive collision. You got a silicon game where the chips are booming, everyone wants more GPUs. Oh, yeah. GPUs cost more than an ounce of gold, okay? So they're, so you're seeing, a wild fact. so completely valuable, people are building clouds around it. And then the cloud players like AWS have so much power. There's a collision course between the semiconductors and the clouds, and everyone in between is going to be impacted. And the great news is, it's a massively growing market because what AI is bringing to the table is what HPC's mission has been for um, decades. And yeah. the precision and scale come right to the forefront. Uh, SC23 is completely re revitalized. Total vindication of this entire community. Um, yeah. This is going to be a show that's just going to be reborn and refactored and just gonna, it's going to go to the moon it's, or, and, or Mars, I would say, if you want to be totally nerdy. Well, it is. I mean, the reality is these high performance computers all around us, I can even hear the power that's being pulled into this room right now. Each one of these devices is powering things like that. They're, they're taking our rockets to space. They're sequencing our genomes. They are predicting our weather. We've talked to NASA here on the show before about how to predict that. And it's these collective systems like you touched on that are partnerships, not only between some of the largest enterprises on Earth and the biggest players in the technology space, but also with universities and with different groups of people that are collaborating to quite literally, perhaps pun intended in this case, architect our future yeah. and, and solve those problems. Well, I'm super excited. We're going to have some amazing guests from Dell Technology, so shout out for Dell for the sponsorship, as well as top executives from Broadcom, Jazz Tremblay, Vice President General Manager of Data Center Solutions. We're going to have Armando Acosta coming on twice. He just kicked off, and I just attended his afternoon session for the HPC Community Meetup. And you had Intel, NVIDIA, AMD, Boeing, um, Cambridge University was there, just talking about all the issues, density and cooling, silicon diversity, accelerators, mm -hmm. the future G CPU and accelerators on the same board, um, AL, ML, perf, benchmarks, how to attack these new challenges that AI brings up, great conversational, and then the data governance came up. So in a supercomputing show, they're talking data governance and then data model governance. How are you going to govern the models? So model management. It matters. How do you reproduce what you've figured out once you're doing a lot of, people are doing a lot of POCs to configure their HPCs for large scale AI modeling. But once you get that, you got to yeah. write it down. Like, okay, how do we get here? And then reproduce it and then instrument it. So a complete revolution is going on at that level. The benchmarking, how to standardize on it. Yeah. Uh, total, again, total vindication. AI hardware will dominate, and AI, AI needs interconnects and networking. That's why Broadcom is so psyched, because they got Ethernet. 
yeah. Ethernet and interconnects are going to be huge in HPC and AI's hardware is going to dominate, the chips are going to dominate. So again, chips and cloud are colliding and that's going to create so much opportunity for entrepreneurs and innovators. And this, this is essentially your super cloud thesis, is it not? Yes, it absolutely is. I mean, you're seeing already companies like Core Weaver, they're basically a GPU cloud enabled mm -hmm. by this, what I call, white label second tier clouds that Dave and I have been talking about that's going to emerge on top of the hyperscale. So you're going to start to see a whole new market develop where specialty clouds are going to have that silicon. And for, for Broadcom and the chip companies, they could actually get into the cloud because the cloud guys are making their own silicon, Savannah. So that, as a hedge, you're like, wait a minute, whoa, what business are you in, <clears throat> Amazon? Yeah, oh yeah. Are you in our business if you're a chip person? And then like, we'll get the cloud business. So, it's kind of a Cold War stance. Well, I think it's a really interesting, it's a moment when software, hardware, and ambition are converging to design our future, and there's a lot of players very eager to play in that space. Beyond just AI, I think we're going to hear a lot about quantum this week. I think that the ability to do complex calculations at scale and simultaneously is going to take AI to the next level and ask questions, well, answer questions rather that we're not even sure how to ask yet. I think that's definitely yeah. going to be a subject of conversation. I think we'll be hearing about quantum hybrid as well as we, we, we converge the future computing models as well as with classical computing. Yeah. I think we're going to hear a lot about power, a lot about cooling like you were yeah. talking about. I'm really excited to geek out. The, the uh, quantum thing was interesting. Bo Boeing in one of the talks said that they already had see quantum um, implemented on how they do the layer analysis mm -hmm. for wing construction. So, oh wow. So it oh yeah, I could totally And they were doing some stuff with helicopters Absolutely. and the ground. He said it took 800,000 core hours to understand the power dynamics, the, the fluid dynamics of a helicopter landing on the, on, a, on the ground. So from a wing standpoint, they said quantum gets them there faster. Outside of that, molecules, those kinds of use cases. Other than that, I would say the, the real kind of, the, I would say the performance conversation that, that's coming out is the exa, exascale computing. Yeah, I so agree. exaflops, how do you squeeze more out of that? And again, it comes back down to what I was mentioned earlier about the Broadcom opportunity around interconnects and networking. So you're going to see Ethernet and you're going to see the innovations around CPU accelerators on the same board, chipsets in combination with density and cooling. Yeah. That's going to add to the exaflop capability. So I think you're going to start to see um, some new configurations. And of course, you're going to see the partner networks. We're going to have Liquid come on uh, um, from there uh, on the show. So again, yeah. that's one. You mentioned a lot of our really great partners, all of whom we're super grateful for, Dell, Broadcom, etc. I'm also really excited to talk to some of the universities that are here and to hear more about some of the bigger scale projects that are going on with the existing supercomputings and to really learn not just how those of us who've been in the space for a long time are thinking about it, but what is the next generation thinking about supercomputing about AI, how are they going to use the technology of the future to save us from ourselves in a lot of circumstances? I mean, you have kids. Yeah. What's the dinner table conversation like at your house about AI? <laughs> well, if they basically like see it. So they see the, the consumerization of the, the user experience. Then it's provocative. Then it becomes into like starting to imagine what's going to emerge. And then it gets intellectual at that point in our conversations around, okay, was that good or bad? My son's talking about from a music standpoint, is that good for artists? Well, if you're an existing artist, you want your rights. But if you're an up and comer, you can use AI to actually propel up to the, the elite ranks. If you're stuck in the middle, you, you either don't have fully funded or you've got legacy stuff and you could try to take territory from the existing players, they might get hurt the most. So we're seeing power dynamics around how AI can help and hurt people. Uh, here in this community, it's like more about scale, computing power, and cross-disciplinary integration. Starting to see the breakdown of, that's my department only, I did my thing, up my pats, I won an award to, right. no, I need to cross over and integrate with other departments um, because you got the emergence of open source, silicon yeah. scale, cloud scale, DevSecOps, all living together in yeah. one little kind of cloud semiconductor, again, collision, uh, scalability, computing power, data and IO comes up, so bottlenecks, mm -hmm. networking, interconnects, and of yeah. course, sustainability and waste. Huge conversation around waste uh, in, in this area, because again, more power 
more cores. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> more data it. processing faster is great for our advancement, so. but there is a trade-off there, and it's not just in the in the power, but it's also the sustainability, as well as the cost optimization. And given yeah. our current economic state, yeah. I suspect we're going to be having a lot of conversations about how to do this large-scale application yeah. for these projects at a cost that's affordable for yeah. a variety of different projects. And I think the other thing that's jumping out is the old the old set data setter conversation. It's not your grandfather's um, HPC or data center. You're starting to see storage looking at differently. How do you store stuff? The servers, how many cores are on there? Exaflops. Yeah. Networking, so you got more cores on the servers. Networking becomes huge, so that's one. And then the hyperscalers are also buying a lot. So the people who sell chips, if the hyperscalers don't adopt Savannah, then yeah. that kind of hurts the market from an adoption standpoint. So you know, what, is, what do you do from an architecture? So that's one. And then finally, my favorite is the emergence of NVIDIA, Broadcom, and the semiconductor players who have the opportunity to serve these specialty clouds and reminds me of the old days of white box servers. Yeah. Which by the way, all the early cloud players bought mm -hmm. and bought up and ran their clouds on. So you know, I think you're going to see the emergence of these specialized clouds like core weavers of the world um, doing specialized things that's come up a lot. So I just think it's going to be an opportunity for this, this industry to really deliver real value. Oh, I think you're absolutely right. I think hardware is having a moment. I think hardware is sexy again. I think we've, we were coming out of an era where all anyone talked about was software, yeah. but I think is now that the focus is back on AI, I was, I was thinking about this a lot. You know, I got to thank you, not only do we do a great show here that I'm lucky to be a part yeah. of, but you've built a great AI with thecubeai.com. Yeah. I got to use it this morning to write an article on LinkedIn you all should check out, and it was great to see what we were talking about last yeah. year to revisit some of the highlights and and see how much momentum has shifted in yeah. just the last 12 months. I think yeah. we're about to have a really well, epic show. I'm excited you brought that up because our goal is to keep playing with it, make it better because it's a knowledge engine. Right. It should be able to assist us. Like, I was using it to get video clips from last year too. I'm like, okay, well, give me five yeah. video clips on HPC and, and Dell. And it came up with the best clips. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. So I revisited that yeah. and it's just, it's getting better, but you know, again, the specialty cloud could be NVIDIA DGX, or is it going to be Amazon? <laughs> Where do we host that? Where do we host these AI technologies? Well, I got to ask you a question. You're, you're in the community. Do you see this community changing with AI? Because you know, you're going to start to see the, the technical culture, because AI to this community is like, is it, well, it's all hyped up. Because technical people tend to be skeptical of the hype. What do you see here? What's your vibe on the community? I think that this shines light on the devices that power our technology. And I think it's easy to romanticize founders in the Silicon Valley who had successful SaaS companies as an example over the last decade and have gotten a lot of warranted attention. Sometimes I think for good reason and other times still pumping out companies that aren't revenue positive. Yeah. You don't always think about the machine underneath your desk or the thing, the server farms powering the satellites in outer space, in space yeah. rather. But I think that this event celebrates this. I think that this community is proud to have more applications of a technology that they've been working on for a long time. Compute power has been improving. We've been trying to do things better, faster, cheaper at scale. Quantum's been rising. We've had a lot of things that have been, and not just waiting for this moment, but I think, I think that AI isn't the only reason this conference yeah. is relevant. I think that AI is an illustrative example that the world is coming to familiarize themselves yeah. with right now in this moment that allows us to have a more robust and mainstream conversation yeah. about high performance computing. And I think the AI is going to change the hardware game. I think hardware, again, we talk about matters. I think the, the, the tech nerds on the hardware are going to make things happen. AI will dominate. It's vindication for HPC. You're going to see hyperscale is dominating the trends. And then you need interconnects and networking. That's going to favor all the chips. So yeah. a, lot of, a, lot of re, a lot of revitalization. So we had a great kickoff. We're going to bring back day one coverage. Actually, this is day, half a day. E first evening event. We'll feel like we're, it's like election coverage here. Yeah, it's great. All right, we're about <laughs> to start theCUBE right now. <laughs>